All right, I'm a little bit late. Um, only by a minute or so, or is it two minutes? So I do apologise. My intention was not to be late. I was just um, I was got caught up um, watching one of uh, Jeremy Crawford's videos, and then I got caught up watching um, what was it? Uh, Chris Perkins talking about Halloween. So. So I do apologize for that. We are here. I am back. It's time to do some painting. This is my day off Okay, so if you haven't uh, hung out with me on my day off when I'm painting, I'm pretty informal um, As always I will have the original start time when I get started doing my thing It will be included down in the description like all of my live streams um, as for Usually I present everything first and then I open it up to questions, but that's uh, not what happens today. I'm just going to paint and then once I've finished painting, um, or well not once I've finished painting, while I'm painting you can talk about Dungeons and Dragons with me or anything you like. It's up, completely up to you, okay? So I will um, start us off and then let's get some painting done, eh? Hi, welcome to How to d d My name is Fred Wheeler and today I'm going to talk about Dungeons and Dragons. But while I'm talking about Dungeons and Dragons, although that's not the main focus for today, this is my day off where I just cruise, um, I'm going to paint uh, or continue to paint my Purple Worm from Gale Force 9. And uh, I've had this for quite some time. I'm, I've been leading into it or trying to get myself organized enough to actually finish completing work on it. And I'm really hoping that today is going to be the day that I get uh, a significant amount done. But there's a lot of work, so I suspect it's going to take me many, many hours to get it done. So by all means, chat along with me about Dungeons and Dragons all you like. I'm perfectly fine with that. And uh, yeah, this is essentially what I'm hoping it will look like in the end. I don't know that my painting skill is that good that I'll be able to pull it off, but I'm going to try really, really hard. So uh, let's get cracking and into our and into the painting. Now you guys are going to let me know if the sound or the video is poor, um, otherwise I won't know what's going on. Okay, here we go. We're in. Uh, okay, so where is my brush? I think I'm going to use my standard. That's my layers. I want to use my standard Citadel brush. Um, I had been painting it purple. I covered it with brown, a black coat, and then I got brown in some locations, and then purple. But I'm thinking I'm going to get into the flesh area here and try to sort of um, uh, highlight that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go with two different colors. I'm going to try using my tan earth first in there, and then I'm going to use the flat flesh color to sort of uh, lighten it up and then I'll, uh, I'll use a wash at some point uh, later on okay so that's my plan for today um, and I'm hoping I'll get some of the plates completed as well on the underneath of the, the worm so yeah I was uh, I was watching I was watching videos I was watching other people's videos which is why I was a little itty bitty 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 late today um, uh, there we go, that's that, and we get some water on there, and then just make sure that it's not too thick, but not too thin, otherwise it's going to spread everywhere. Okay, I um, have posted a, I wouldn't say it's a video, it's more of a, um, you can give some feedback if you like. On Facebook, I put in a, a post regarding what are sort of some of the um, superstitions, superstitions, Dungeons and Dragons dice superstitions that people have. I thought that would be interesting. I've been wanting to do it for some time, and I thought, well, today is the day. So hence, that's what's going on. Um, normally, with a lot of my painting videos, you'll see a lot of sort of uh, big broad colors being painted this today is going to be a lot of fine detail so if you see my brush moving slowly is because there's a reason um, I might have to move to the other brush and that's way too watery so let's just wipe that off and start again uh, I did a video yesterday a live stream on the death house for those of you who are inclined to run death house um, and there will be a follow-up video on it, but it's more of the adventure hooks rather than anything else. So if you're wondering if I was going to do Curse of Strahd, 
Um, probably not until I've finished the Lost Mine of Fandelver. And with any luck, provided it all goes well, I will get a chance to um, play Dungeons and Dragons this week. We weren't able to play last week, which is why the Facebook group for How to D&D has been a bit quiet. Um, but yes, I'm hoping that we'll get to play. Couldn't be avoided. Life things come into play sometimes. You just have to just deal with it. <clears throat> and uh, I, the situation was such that I totally get it. I'd be exactly the same way. I won't explain it though. Um, but we are playing uh, in a game that uh, a friend of mine is running. He's DMing right now. I'm not DMing. It's quite nice to not have to DM and actually get to play a character. I kind of enjoy it. Um, I'm currently playing a, a paladin, sorcerer, dragonborn by the name of Feskin. And um, I've been wanting to try and play this type of character for a while. And it's really nice to be able to do so. There we go. <clears throat> I don't know if you guys can see exactly what I'm doing, but I'm trying to get the brown into the sort of between the plates. They're supposed to be sort of fleshy bits. So I'm just running my brush along there and trying to sort of pick it up. And if I do a really, really good job, it'll leave some of the, the black there, but it doesn't really matter because I can wash it if I need to, right? So I don't need to freak out. It's only if I start going over the purple will I'll have to touch up that. Okay. And do do do. So um, some of the weird uh, dice superstitions that I've come across over the years. I know I had a friend who insisted that the best way. I don't know if you guys can see what I'm doing here. I'll, I'll move the. I'll move my hand as best I can, but. Uh, basically he would roll the dice and if it wasn't rolling well he would roll out the the bad dice apparently uh, but he would also then position his dice so that um, all of the the dice will always had to be 20 sided up and the the, the one had to be down because so apparently then all the molecules would go into it <laughs> would sink down into the one um, uh, creating like a, a temporary, what do you call it, loaded dice effect so that when he rolled his dice next then um, he would get a 20 more likely rather than a 1. I used to, it was quite funny, it was really really amusing some of the suggestions people have for how uh, you, you, might, <laughs> you might make your dice roll better. Um, that was really really odd. Um, I had heard of somebody who stuck their dice in the microwave. I don't know why you would think that sticking your dice in the microwave would make uh, anything happen other than just heat them up, maybe melt them. I don't know about making them roll better. Okay. All right. I feel like this is working. <coughs> That's not to say I won't have to do a bit of the touch up because I knew I will. It's going to happen. So yes, if you um, get some time and you're inclined, you can go check out the um, the Dungeons and Dragons Fifth Edition uh, group or my How to D&D Facebook group, which would probably be a lot easier to find because there won't be like thousands and thousands of posts, and you will be able to put your uh, your own superstition in there if you want to. Oh yeah, that is um, that is a really narrow section there. I'm going to have to use a smaller brush or just paint it in and then paint out all the problems with the purple. Okay, all right, keep going. It's working. Oh. I'd, um, I'd watched Handbook Helper, which uh, is the Critical Roles uh, sort of rules video you know, for people who are sort of getting started with Dungeons and Dragons. And I see that they have hit some of the snags that I have had to deal with over the years with regard to doing videos on Dungeons and Dragons rules. It's always sort of a quagmire because if you're 
do them a particular way, some people can get very, very upset and feel like, like you've, you've committed a cardinal role. And um, they made the fatal mistake of including a, uh, a variant rule for armor class, which I've almost never heard of before. Um, and not clearly explaining how the basics of hitting armor class works and so it's generated a bit of and a lot of people were quite happy with that video but I know it's going to create a whole lot of confusion I can just see it now um, there'll be more than a few people who come to my table and say Fred but this is what it said on critical role um, handbook helper said and there's 38,000 people have watched that video compared to you know the likes of any other rules videos that come out. Surly Tim, how's it going? I always use a toothpick to hit those tight spots on a miniature. I really need to look into getting one of these. Um, okay, so, so first off, people have asked me about how to get this miniature. And I did a bit of research. You're not going to get it off you um, off uh, Amazon or anywhere else. You will have to go to the Gale Force Nine website. It looks like you still can get it, but it will be a special order. Um, I don't know its price. I would suggest going to the website and seeing what the deal is. Um, that's yeah. The toothpick idea is not such a bad idea, um, Surly. I, I I just don't know if I'd be very good with a toothpick anyway. Um, I've got a smaller brush that I can use. I'm just using the bigger brush and just accepting that I might have to go over the purple in some places. It's all right. I, will, I can live with it. If, if everybody else can live with it, I can live with it. Hence, that's what I'm doing. So yeah, I have, like I said, included the link to the Gale Force 9 purple worm that I'm painting if you want to go and check it out. Um, that link is not an affiliate link. I don't get any benefit from you buying it from them. So if you thought that I was lining you up for a, a quick sale, no, nope, that's not the case. Um, do, 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 do. All right, this brush is getting a little bit dry. I'm going to have to just rinse it out. So how long am I likely to be hanging around? It's about... Usually I, I will paint for about an hour. I feel like that's enough. And after that, my hands and my eyes are all completely stuffed. I can't sort of focus anymore. Um, occasionally I do paint a little bit beyond that, but that's not really always the case. Okay, so let's get a bit more tan. <laughs> what, what a good idea it was to stick those ball bearings into the um, Vallejo um, squeezy bottles. It was a huge improvement. I'm so glad that I did that. So I am using the Tan Earth Vallejo uh, right now with my little ball bearing inside. Surly Tim, what's that? Thanks for the information. I have been um, sharpening the tip of a toothpick uh, to that of a an old nib for a fountain pen and can get pupils or eyes pretty good. Oh, okay. I just don't have any toothpicks on me, so otherwise I I might do that. I'm I'm gonna ex just accept that I will not be doing a perfect job, and I can touch it up later anyway, so it's not the end of the world. There are ways of fixing things. You just hide stuff, right? <laughs> what you can't get right, you hide. Um, or you just repaint over. That's the great thing about paint. You can just repaint over stuff. All right. I feel like that's just about got that sorted. Oh, uh, since last time I painted this, you may have noticed that I have put some brown on the, the spikes. I, I couldn't wait. Um, I couldn't help myself. I was sort of in the mood. I wanted to keep painting, so hence... I kept painting uh, with that. Now, where were we? I think what I'm going to do is I'm definitely going to continue with uh, the brown. Um, I've done in between, but I'm going to let that dry a little bit. And I'm going to start sort of darkening up uh, where the... Um, with the... 
Where the spikes are. Where the spikes are. Get it out of there. Get it out of your mouth, Fred. Come on. Just say it. So, I've gone over briefly with the brown. I think I might go over a, just really quickly again with a little bit more. Just to sort of um, darken it a bit. And then I'll come back. And we'll do the flesh between the plates. Okay, so I'm using flat earth, which is a darker color than the, the what is it, the tan earth. So it's a little bit darker. Oh, it's a bit of dry paint, we'll get rid of that. And we are ready to go again. Okay, so where shall I start? Start at a point which is going to make a lot of sense. And hopefully you guys will have a decent view so you can see what's going on. Uh, I think that's not too bad. I'll just move it about there. Okay, there we go. Sorry guys, I'm just making sure that you can see as I go. I'm, um, I'm really pleased that some of the Dungeons and Dragons tutorials that I've started doing. Um, I was re it's really scary to do rules videos of any kind for Dungeons and Dragons that are live streamed because usually that's totally out of my comfort zone and it would be for anybody because of course you get things wrong and people want to correct you which is t totally get it but often they will think that you don't know what you're doing and it's actually a, just a product of it's live stream you make mistakes it's late at night for me and um, but I wanted to, to have the feel of like a classroom so that when people were watching those they could ask questions that I might not really be able to answer clearly you know it's much easier to show people stuff when you're playing Dungeons and Dragons rather than explain it in the comments section which is why um, I, I've made them live streamed those particular videos I still do the pre-recorded stuff it's not like I'm stopping that stuff at all it's just that I just I want to make sure that I'm um, presenting people with an opportunity to actually sort of pick up some of the basics of the game while I'm showing them with miniatures and dice and a map because it makes it a lot more sort of visual and since video is visual you kind of got to go with the visual aspect of it right I have put a rug into my room so I'm hoping the sound is a, just a fraction better than it has been in the past it was, you guys will have to let me know, those of you who had plenty of time watching me do my um, my painting videos, let me know. If I haven't, oh, I just keep putting soft things on the walls, right? The egg trays are building up, <laughs> but I'm pointing my, my mouth at the uh, the desk, and I imagine that my, the sound is bouncing off the hard desk. Here before we get a bit of reverb. I'm still working on, um, what is it, the fantastic locations, for those of you who, who might have noticed I started doing that series, so that's coming out, and I'm really looking forward to getting those out in a, in a prompt manner. Uh, I'm still going to try to, when I can, edit things down, you'll, you'll get days where I sort of, I'm a bit too busy, couldn't get all the notes done. You know, came home from work and I'm feeling a bit tired, and I'll just put up a, a pre-recorded video. Um, it's probably like a live stream that's been edited down. But yeah, it's very quiet in the room. There must be something going on that I don't know of. Normally there'd be more people asking me questions, whether they were players or dungeon masters. Um, you might have noticed I'm only painting one side of the the spike. The reason for that is it's just easier to get at, and I'll turn it round and do the other side of the spike as well just not just yet what's that Surly? Surly Tim your instruction videos have been a great help to my group and I I am very grateful for them oh well, that's excellent um, Surly I'm, I'm glad you're finding them useful there is one video that I will remake so if you've come across that video it's for the Barbarian and that is the Reckless Attack um, I have got some of the details wrong, I believe. I have had no response from Jeremy Crawford, which I've asked him multiple times for some um, feedback on how it works. 
but I've gone over it and talked to a few people and I've kind of got an idea of what went wrong. It's not quite the way everybody else in the comments has um, indicated, but it does have um, some elements to it that I should have pointed out. And so I will redo that video at a later date and take down the older video when I'm ready and once that's done. So yes, when it comes to the Barbarian's Reckless Attack and you see that video, don't consider it um, definitive or correct because it's not. There are some problems with it. Now, what am I doing here? I went, I went up there, I now need to go here and I need an angle that allows me and you guys to see what's going on. And that's the, always the tricky bit is getting an angle that I can access and you can see. All right, so we'll go like that. And then if I, uh, yeah, you should be able to see most of what I'm doing as I come down the, down the spine. I, um, I really think one of the best parts of painting is the fact that you don't need to sort of focus on anything else. Everything else has just gone out the window because it's so fine detail and tricky. You kind of got to focus on it. You can't sort of worry about other things. There we go. It's working out all right. Just keep working my way down the little animal. It's not really a little animal, it's a big one in terms of its scale. Oh, there we go. All right, so change the position now. I should be able to get at it a bit easier from this side. It's just the top section, it's a bit hard to access it. But now it's working out reasonably well. Yeehaw. I've got a friend who I'm encouraging to paint his miniatures. He bought like a whole bunch of miniatures from the board games. Um, Wrath for Chardelon, um, I believe it was, is it the Drips game or the Curse of Strut? I can't remember. Um, I think it was the, the Ravenloft Castle board game. And um, you know, it's always nice if they're painted and it gives you something to do, right? Unless of course you just don't have enough time to do that sort of thing. go all right just need to I'm just going to clean out my brush because it's starting to sort of split a bit whoops I'm whistling it's like it that's the worst thing you could possibly hear in a microphone is whistling <laughs> and I've started doing it oh nicely done okay let's get rid of that water and remix do, 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 do. It's getting warmer and warmer here in New Zealand. So I imagine that um, eventually I will have to cycle out my painting videos and I'll have to move to doing uh, the crafting videos because the paint will dry too quickly. We're not there yet, but I'm sure it will eventually happen. Okay, back to painting the spikes. Do, 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 do. I went and bought myself some uh, Everland Sunset, and this is for the, the Umber Hulk. I've got an Umber Hulk miniature to paint at some point as well. And I've got way too many things. It feels like I'm playing Dungeons and Dragons. No, it doesn't. It feels like I'm playing a game from Games Workshop where I've got way too many miniatures and not enough time to paint them all. Just because it takes so long paint everything okay so that's that series of spikes um, I'm going to do the same down here probably not going to get too carried away with the underneath because I'm going to be going over with gray as well uh, can you see it how do I need to hold it so I need to hold it in such a way without touching the existing paint and so you can still see what I'm doing um, that'll have to do right there What's that, Surly? I am painting two hags and finishing my terrain for Saturday night uh, at the moment. Oh, okay, cool. It does help the time to pass easier, so I have to agree with you 100%. Well, I, I think that um, having something to do other than spending your time 
preparing for an adventure is always nice. If it's always thinking about what's going to happen, you know, here, how this NPC is going to work, uh, what lo what's in this location, it's always the, um, you know, I don't really enjoy the preparation of Dungeons and Dragons adventures. I always enjoy more playing the game. Um, and I have to say that I prefer painting and making miniatures over preparing material. I know that's not the case for everybody, but it's just me. So what are you um, preparing? Uh, what, are you be, what are you going to be playing, uh, Surly? Is it your own sort of homebrew adventure that you're running, or is it something else? Is it a, uh, a pre-made adventure that um, Wizards of the Coast put out, or a third party? Oh, that's way too watery. Let's see if we can just ditch some of that paint. Um, I'm going to come back to that. I feel like it's going to bleed if I touch it. There we go. Very good. Whoops. You put your finger where the wet paint is. That's not going to work, is it? Yes. Haha. -ha. Okay. And now there's one spike there that I'm going to struggle to get at, but I'm going to have a go. If I make a mess. I couldn't help it. It was so hard to get it. <laughs> okay. That's not too bad. And then we'll come around this way. And uh, just make sure that you can actually see what I'm doing. And just position myself. Yeah, it's not too bad. I think that angle's not too, too bad at all. It'll do nicely. Okay, so paint in here. I um I have been reading through Tales from the Yawning Portal, uh, the Hidden Shrine of Tomotion, and it's interesting how uh, strength checks up work. In older versions of Dungeons and Dragons, there wasn't really a dice roll involved. It was simply you know if you needed to make a strength check uh, or determine how to move something, you would have to have a certain number of characters of a certain strength so the strength score was what was the factor not the modifier and that would help you determine whether they could move a rock or a door and I thought this was actually a smart way of doing things you know um, I think one example it listed that there needed to be at least four characters involved with a combined strength score of 50 so that means that the concept of working as a team is highlighted more rather than somebody standing out and doing a phenomenal uh, job and a great big chunk of luck of uh, rolling it well on the dice. It also means that there's, you know, there's really not much point rolling a, a strength check for something that they're going to be able to repeat doing anyway. Why, why even bother? So I, I actually think that's a really good, much better mechanic than what we currently have running in a lot of games. Certainly, what's that? Um, I write all of my own material and build uh, box tiles to stack for terrain. And they will be uh, leaving their, sh ooh, their ship this weekend from for Creature from the Black Lagoon style adventure. Ooh! I, I enjoy um, Creature from the Black Lagoon. Um, not so much the return, uh, but I certainly thought the first one was nice. But then again, I was I always liked Hammer Horror. Um, I've got quite a few in my library of uh, movies, so I can appreciate that. Okay, so now it's time to get onto the other side. I just need a drink of water, guys, because I'm getting dry. Okay, so let us bring down the brown. Where's the brown? Oh, I'm out of brown. Okay, so squeeze some more brown in there. So for those of you who haven't figured it out, these videos that I do when I sit here painting and talk, really they are tailored for um, 
people who want to ask me questions and people who are doing their own painting because I know um, often it gets really quiet and you sort of you know um, I would often listen to other things uh, or watch something while I'm painting but not so much watch I think listening is actually much easier when you're painting just to keep my brain going whether it be music or something like that that'll do that's good enough I feel like that'll give you a decent view while I'm painting on the uh, brown well I have those moments just every once in a while when my eyes just go wacky I wish I could um, have my eyes uh, work well with glasses but when I had the option to go with the close glasses the difference between my eyes and having the glasses for close in views was not that much of a difference but it's enough you know you can't I can't play pull anymore which is a bugger because the, the the lenses on um, the glasses they magnify everything it's so everything positions not quite right you can still see it clearly but the position of where the ball or where things are is slightly out and that's really important for fine motor control and delicate things that you know require uh, just being really accurate I honestly find it frustrating I have to cut keys at work and when I have to cut really small nodules off um, a blank it's really hard for me to see it sometimes. What's that, Surly? The Hammer movies were always the best. No dis disrespect to the older movies, but the Hammer movies were brilliant. Yeah, well, because they built up suspense, didn't they? Um, they did all the things that you, you, you want a movie to do, which is you don't show everything straight away. And they were dark, they were moody, they were scary. And um, I can't count uh, of, you know, the number of Hammer movies that I watched. And I think about my feelings at the end of it. It was always like, oh, that's, that's really got right there in, in, in the, the juxta of it. You know? It wasn't just a, oh, the shock surprise, you know, the, the, jump, the jump surprise, which is a terrible um, use of um, horror tension you know where you just have something jump out really quickly where it's not really scary it's just because it presented itself to your eyes really fast you had no other re re reaction but to sort of um, jump the jump scares I don't like them uh, Surly, I work with bifocals so it is uh, maddening to do this kind of work yeah yeah Bifocals always don't quite give you the kind of accuracy that you require, and it's, it is frustrating. So I'm glad somebody else um, understands what I'm talking about. I imagine that um, over in the States, I don't know where everybody is, but I imagine over in the States there's a lot of people who are, uh, is it Halloween or... Something like that, or is that already gone? I don't know. I, I noticed there's a lot of sort of um, Halloween-based uh, Dungeons and Dragons videos popping up, so I'm assuming that's the case right now. And that is almost there. Okay. All right. Cool. All right. I'm pretty happy with that layer. I'm just going to put that there for a second and wash out my brush again. Okay, so let us get. I feel like I should leave that. I'm going to come back and I'm going to do the flesh between the plates before the um, I leave. So that's definitely going to be um, happening today. Uh, I will get my layer brush though for making that happen. What's that, Surly? Halloween, yes, the best time of the year. Laugh out loud. <laughs> I don't know about the best time of the year, but it's a fun time of the year. It's not something we celebrate here in New Zealand. It's uh, it's very much a um, USA sort of thing as far as I know. Uh, um, but I know that there are 
problem is with um, marketing and stores and um, any anybody who's trying to sell anything, they'll cash in on every single holiday, whether it has anything to do with um, your own culture or not. And um, latching on to the USA's um, Halloween in New Zealand happens just to sell stuff, really. Lego Lake, hello, how are you doing? Okay, all right, so I've washed out my brush. I am moving on to, oh, that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to paint inside the mouth because I'm pretty sure inside the mouth needs to be fleshy and I thought I would attack the mouth inside the mouth and get it, get it going. Um, and there's lots of different ways you can do it apparently, but I feel like I'm gonna go with the tan and then go with the flesh. I was gonna go with the red, but I just don't like the idea now, so I'm not going to do that. So I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go inside the mouth of the, I'm gonna go inside the mouth of the purple worm. Where is it? It's here. <laughs> There you go, Lake. Can you make a suit or a costume about D&D to Halloween? Can I make a suit? It's not something I'm really going to have a lot of time to do. That's the only hassle. So, um, I, my brother is right into making suits. I, I'm not really that, that inclined. I used to, um, but that's when I was doing sort of live role-playing LARPy stuff. Yes, I did LARP at one point, for those of you who are wondering what was going on. Yep, it happened. Yes, it is a part of my life. It, well, it was. And then you get old, and you just can't take getting smacked by rubber swords. Uh, hence, I don't do that anymore. Okay? All right, so I'm painting inside the mouth. Hi, Darren. Hey, Fred. Hey, how's it going? It's going pretty well. So, Darren, um, I would like to talk to you about um, my Amazon affiliate marketing um, link because I went to try to find out if um, you had if the the Canadian uh, Amazon would pick up your what was it I believe it was uh, Waters Deep Dragon Heist your purchase of that I'm pretty sure it did <clears throat> and then <clears throat> I looked at October and this is the very first time it's ever happened I don't know what happened, but somebody bought something so expensive, I hit my threshold for payment in less than one month. So either somebody bought a lot of stuff in October, which I really do appreciate, or somebody bought something extremely expensive, and as a result, I wound up with, I think it's like $127 US um, going to my account which when translated into New Zealand money will be vastly more because um, New Zealand money is like rubbish money. It's not worth very much. So I was amazed, I was blown away because it's the very first time. And I suspect that as a result of you, Darren, if you went and bought some sort of printer, which I know you were talking about doing. So I thought I would let you know that's what happened. Um, and if you had bought a printer in October, then <laughs> that's probably a result of your purchases. And thank you very much. Holy Toledo. Would never have expected that. And it's going to be good because I've got a couple of books I need to go and... Yes, Darren, you brought a new 3D printer. Well, if you went through that website and you did it, mate, it, it showed up and it was a huge payment. Less than one month. And I got like 127, which is my threshold is, I think it's like a hundred and something dollars before I get paid out. So thank you, man. That was awesome. And I will use that money to pay my mortgage. So I still have will get them sent to me. Uh, reconnection successful. Whew. Blimey. Let's just check to make sure everything's working properly because OBS did something crazy just a second ago and I just want to make sure everything's working properly. Uh, it, has, it has gone back to being all right. I don't know why it did that. The CPU is saying it's doing fine. It's clocking along. Okay, all right. All checked. We're all good. We seem to be live streaming with reasonable quality. Okay, all right, so it's back to painting. Sorry about that. 
Hey man, no problems Darren, if you can't stay long, I, I know this is the time of the day, it's not really suitable for streaming, it's, it works for me, it doesn't necessarily work for everybody else. Okay, so, but hey, thank you very much for showing up. And um, my, my shifts are going to change in New Zealand, I'm hoping, if all goes well, that I will get um, a shift that means I will have uh, Sunday and Monday in New Zealand off which will mean those of you will be able to see me live streaming on a, a Saturday and a Sunday in your own country. Which means it, you're probably going to find a lot easier to actually hang around and chat with me in my live streams. I know this is much preferred. I'm still waiting to see if my boss will agree to it, but it would be awesome if it did. And it means I get uh, a day off on the weekend because right now I just have to work right through the weekends in New Zealand. And it's just how it is. But, yeah, never know. Thanks, Darren. I'll see you later. So, yes. Um, yeah. All going well. You guys will get a chance to see more of me at the time when it's rather than it being late at night. I know it works really well for those people in other parts of the country, but um, world, sorry, not country, world, world. My, my country only has one time zone. That's how small it is. Uh, okay, all right, so where is my paint? I had I put it down. I've managed to lose it. Oh, there we go. It's a flat earth. So I'm painting, as I said, the flat earth in the mouth. I'm then going to go into the tanned earth. I'm hoping that uh, if I sort of brush it on lightly, it will work. And then I'm going to go with a fleshy color. Do fleshy, do fleshy color. Uh, it's a bit more, a bit more water. Water that down just a little bit. And we're in again. La -da -do 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 -do. Right now, all I need to do is just get the colour on, right? You guys must be familiar with this. This is when I'm painting one solid colour rather than doing fine detail. Uh, at least it's not black. <laughs> okay. Um, now, how do I get in there with, with, with while you guys can see? I don't know if you can. Might just have to just paint in there to suck it up. There we go. Got it in the corner there, in the mouth corner. All right. Okay. So that is the inside of my mouth, roughly coated with the brown. Good news. Now underneath plates are some of these sections that are a little bit sort of uh, light so I'm going to coat some of them as well um, how's it going hate welcome to my little live stream so I'm just painting this on really really quickly and then I'm going to start painting uh, the individual plates I've got myself some gray so that's that's the plan. Is it going to go with the grey? Tell me, tell me. No, no. There we go. All right, moving it around. Oh, um, I'm tidying up my office, which has been interesting, if not. A little bit odd so um, hopefully that will mean I'll get a bit more organized in terms of what I can do and uh, in terms of uh, making the place a little bit sort of softer um, rather than just having egg trays everywhere egg trays are all very well but not great right what brand of paint do you use Fred uh, okay so I'm using where is it I'm using Vallejo that's the paint I'm using you should be able to find uh, that stuff down in the description, mate. And I, occasionally, I'm using also... Where is it? I've been using the um, the Citadel uh, Nagaroth Knight, which is a purple. So that's the main colour for the worm, right? Well, not the main colour, but pretty close to the main colour. Here we go. Good, good, good. Alright, so I feel like I'm probably going to get a bigger brush and just brush on uh, a lot faster 
the brown underneath since I don't need to be too fussy about that and get it done a little bit quicker and then it's time to start dealing with another part of the animal um, also too I have been re-kitting some of my older live streams on the wizard the sorcerer and the warlock because I, I realized that um, some of the names and the um, thumbnails didn't really lend them very well to people understanding what the heck I'd done. So hence I have um, retooled them a little bit and you will hopefully find them um, a bit easier to sort of search for too. I've given them better titles so that they don't, they don't sort of get lost amongst the gazillion videos that are out there now. Uh, I might need a bit more brown I guess just for underneath. And there we go. Shall I go with the stiffer brush or the, th the, the softer brush? The softer brush is smaller. Okay, so a little bit of water. Actually, I'm going to dip it completely and then I'll take some of the water off. Get a little bit damp. And then brush off and then in paint. Okay. Because let's get real, I'm, I can use a wash, I don't have to go and get completely crazy about this. It was just such a big area to cover, it would be silly, right? So, we'll just do that instead. Apply our paint a lot faster. Rather than me using a tiny brush and trying to get all of that done in, what, limited time? It ain't going to get done in limited time. It won't get done at all. Okay, it's working all right. Let's brush in there. I am not getting too fussy because I actually I'm fine with there being some dark patches that I miss. That actually works for me. And down this way, just brush in. As I said, I had already painted the underneath of this quite a lot compared to last time. I know, so you, if you're wondering why suddenly it's progressed a lot more than it had, that's why. Uh, da, 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 there we go. Yeah, the brush is just a little bit too soft to get, get in the places I want it to go, but oh well. It doesn't need to be perfect, does it? One of the best things I've ever done is making sure that I don't try to be a perfectionist about everything. Perfectionists are the ones who have all the stress right and they die first. <laughs> and unfortunately, um, I certainly grew up being a perfectionist. Never get anything done. It's the problem with being um, picky about stuff is you never get, you, everything gets done really well, but you, you never really complete anything. Okay, so just down here, there's a little bit more brown I'm going to put on, so I'm doing that now. I'll just squeeze out a bit more paint, and then water it down a little bit, and then we'll move on to the next step. Man, the time flies. Already it's 1.20. It's amazing how quickly the time moves. Okay. And I don't need to worry about the rocks because the rocks are going to get done later, so let's forget about them. And then we just dab, 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 dab. I'm, and now I'm just getting mucky, right? Just dabbing wherever. Maybe I need a smaller brush to get into these locations. Oh, there's a little bit of, little bit of, un, there's a bit of grey in there. I just can't quite reach it. Actually really hard to get at some of the locations on this thing. Okay. Alright, so I'm going to go with a smaller brush and see if I can get in there. Uh, Surly, I am a perfectionist and always come up with uh, more stuff to do and always get it done. Being an insomniac has its advantages. Oh my gosh, well that's, that's very... <laughs> An insomniac, yes, I can understand that. I couldn't do that. I can't function without uh, enough sleep. Otherwise, I'd just sort of uh, walk around like a zombie, making lots of mistakes and doing silly things. 
So yes, sleep is important for me. I can't even imagine what it's like to be an insomniac where you just can't sleep. It would just be awful. Would make an interesting effect for a, uh, a you know, a condition that a monster um, could impart. So a monster that affects your sleep so that you can't ever sleep, which means you would never be able to take a long rest. Oh dear. Okay, that's, that's pretty brutal now. <laughs> Hadn't thought about that. <laughs> it's popped into my brain now though. Will I use it? That's the question. Probably at some point I'll give it a go. I was trying to figure out how to um, live stream off D&D um, &D Beyond. Oh, hi, um, ReTV. How's it going? I was trying to figure out how I could do um, a live stream off D&D um, &D Beyond and do some sort of monster re-kitting or um, updating some of the monsters or just re modifying them so they're a bit more interesting and exciting because some of the monsters are kind of boring and don't make a lot of sense and I feel like they could do with a little bit of a, a touch up not to mention I don't want my players to be able to figure out how my monsters work since they've already memorized all the monsters in the monster manual anyway so um, it would be nice to be able to, to surprise them for once okay so the mouth is done I feel like I can deal with uh, in between the, the plates now I just need a drink of water um, surly Tim what's this roughly 18 hours at the table a day Okay, now that insomniac monster is a great idea. Well, good. Why not? You can't sleep, therefore you can't take a long rest. What does an insomniac monster look like, though? I, f I kind of feel like an insomniac monster is the... It, it should be like a kid's toy, or look like a kid's toy or doll. Um, so that it, it's... It's not, uh, it's not quite obvious to anybody that it's dangerous. That's what I would think. Alright, so I'm now using flat flesh. I'm going to mix that up and I'm going to put that in between the plates. I've already started with a tan. What about like a, a patchwork doll or something like that? Surly Tim looks like me when I haven't had my caf caffeine caffeine coffee oh boy pardon me i was trying to burp and talk at the same time not very not very easy to do <laughs> okay so it's time to flesh it out All right. and it's getting warm in here All right. so i'm now using my smaller brush this is the the layer brush uh so that i can get in to little little itty bitty spots on the miniature Otherwise, I know I will be have there'll be paint everywhere. Okay, so starting here, let's make sure I've got a good position so you guys can see what I'm doing. So let's just check it. Eh, it shouldn't be too bad. Should be all right. Should be good. Do 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 do. I don't actually drink coffee myself, but I totally understand people who do. Makes total sense. There we go. Got the little flash bits done, and now it's going to be hard to do it. Oh, that that top one is the hard. That's hard. That to, trying to get in there and not make a mess of it. Difficult. And I'm just stroking along where the the ribs are so that it just sort of highlights it rather than colours the whole section in. So it should look a bit dark as well. And then of course I have to go back and tidy up the bits that I painted um, painted stuff on and I wanted to have just purple. I feel like that's working tan in the flesh there we go 
For those of you who have been watching my um, Lost Mine of Pandelva series, I don't want you to freak out and think that they aren't going to continue because they are. I haven't finished. I'm just, um, I'm just taking a little bit of a break. I think it's quite clear that I need to get onto the um, doppelganger before I get more questions about the doppelganger because it keeps coming up. It's like, what about the doppelganger? What can I do with the doppelganger? Why are the doppelgangers there? <laughs> oh dear. It's a whole bunch of questions I actually don't know the answers to just yet. I've had a few people suggest some stuff, which is kind of useful. There we go. And I think the workshop I will do this week coming up is going to be for the Barbarian. I've just got to make sure I print out a decent character sheet so I've got something to work from. There we go. Very nice. Let's do it again. Let's just tilt that down. I don't know if you can necessarily see what I'm up to. But, oh, bumzos. That's the technical um, word for I made a mistake. <laughs> I will fix it later. Bumzos. Okay. I got hit with a limited ad for doing the Death House video. And within half an hour of asking for a view, they corrected the problem. That's how fast YouTube is now at fixing those problems up and doing a manual review. Because the, uh, the bots jumped in on it because it had a, a key word that popped up. I think that's really impressive, personally. Okay, let's keep going. We're, we're doing one down one side and it's working out pretty well. I really like it. I noticed, um, and it wasn't on the Gale Force 9 miniature that had been painted, it was somebody else's, and I'd seen that they had painted sort of flesh in between the, the plates, and I thought, that's actually a really cool idea. And even if I, even though it's me doing it, it's not a fantastically awesome job, it does make a difference, eh? I kind of, it does sort of make it pop out a little bit more. Can I get in there, or is that just a, no, nah, I think I should leave that alone. All right, so the other side. Now, the trick is, is figuring out how I'm going to get at it. Uh, give me a second. Let's wash out my brush. And a plan. There must always be a plan. And my plan is about there. Should give me the best view. And a little bit of water since this pink, this flesh color is a bit thick. And then I need to sort of blend it out. And then I need to brush it off a bit so it's less watery since it'll bleed everywhere. And then do I wait? Bio01, how's it going? Hi, welcome to the live stream, man. As I was saying to people who have jumped in, I do answer questions about Dungeons and Dragons. You know, you can talk to me about stuff. You don't have to just sit there and watch me as I try to paint the miniature. Remember, I, I run a channel on Dungeons and Dragons, so I'm used to answering questions. All right, there we go. It's still too much paint. Oh. Okay, all right. Well, that's not fantastic, but it, 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 I got in there. Just trying to make it work. Just trying to make it work. Oh, man. It's the problem when I, there's a point when it comes to doing stuff where you try to be really, really still with your brush and it moves all over the place. And that's what's happening to me right now. Okay. 
I've got a, dr a, uh, a dragon sitting on my floor behind me um, that I'm supposed to have hung on my wall ages ago. It's made out of plywood. I think my mum painted it. It looks really cool. But I, it's still sitting on the floor. I still haven't got organised and got it up on the wall. I think half the problem is deciding where it would go. No, more paint and not too thick, so let's brush that out. Brush that out, brush that out. Dun 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 dun. Uh, Tim Surly, uh, Surly Tim, what's this? I actually work with a hybrid 5e Paladin and Potions of Others system that has been working quite nice. I think we should have it completely fleshed out within the next few months. Okay. I am um, I'm not really big on character classes and builds myself but um, I know I know my players always like that sort of stuff it's not so much every player but I know a lot of my players do I'm always more interested in not so much building NPCs, I've always been more about the monsters. Darn it! Oh, I've got the paint in the wrong place. Live with it, Fred. Just live with it. Okay. It's, it ain't fantastic. I moved my brush too much to one side and I kind of caught an area I didn't want to catch. But I'll tidy it up, that's the thing about paint, right? You can just paint over. Be a lot of painting over, a lot of touching up. Okay, let's do it again. Into the crack, into the crevice. And there we go. I hate to think how many live streams this is going to take. Oh, I did it again. It's that angle. It's so hard to get at. Trust me, you need a really small brush and a really good angle to get into in between those um, those plates to paint in there. The flesh. It's just so hard to get at. Change my angle, change the angle of attack. Okay, so if I go back the other way. I feel like that worked out a lot better. At least something's working. Okay, and if we can just get the last bit of this done and then maybe a bit on the plates done that would be awesome I'd be very happy with that okay come on you stay still okay that paint's drying too much now Let me just mix it up a bit and steady hand It's a little bit watery. Let's just brush that off a bit. Too much water. Not enough water. Too much water. Oh, man. Okay. That's why they invented the washers, right? Oh, man, I did it again. Right there. Right there. It's always the hardest bit to get at. Now that one is even harder to access. Okay, all right, let's do it again. A couple more and we're home free. And I can just sort of... Oh, 
Man. This is part is so frustrating. So frustrating. Okay. Okay, all right. I'm leaving that bit. I'm going to the plates underneath. I will tidy up and clean up the rest of it later and get all the purple bits sorted out. But right now, that is just annoying me now. Hence stress. Stop it, Fred. Hence stress. Okay, so uh, that brush, a drink of water. Now I'm pretty sure that we need to move to a grey because um, I would like it to have that grey effect underneath it. So I need to um, paint in on the plates and try not to sort of overshoot them. Okay, let's give that a shot. Where's my grey? So I'm going to this is a new paint. This is a medium sea grey and this is a Vallejo paint. So I'll give that a shake. And I'm going to attack the underneath. So I'm going to go for the, the belly of the beast. So uh, is that a good position? Hopefully it's a good position for you guys to be able to see. Yeah, it's not too bad. It gives me a reasonable attack point. Can I get it that way? That might be better. Yes, then I can go right-handed. I'm stroking this way. I feel like that's probably going to work better. Although the base is in the way now. That's better. I can get at it still. Alright, we'll work with that, shall we? Let's try that for now. See if we can at least get um, some grey onto these plates underneath. Come on, little ball bearing, shake it up, shake it up. Okay, squeeze it out. Now, I don't know how thick I'm going to need to have this, so I'm going to just start off with it thick and then water it down and see how we go. What's it look like? Actually, not too bad. I don't think I've got to do very much with it at all. Okay. Whoa. Just painting my little plate. Just painting my little plate. Just like so. And keep going. Just work my way through each one. Well, this is only going to take forever. Then again, I think if people sign up, um, jump into the, uh, the live chat of a painting video, they understand that it's going to take a little while. Part of the process. I'm really looking forward to the release of um, the Mad Mage adventure. Under Mountain. Man, is going to be... I really feel like this is going to be a, um, a great dungeon adventure. And it sounds like it leaves the door open for dungeon masters to do their own sort of thing. So if, they, if it's anything like the Dungeons & Dragons 4e map that, that I used to have till it got pinched, um, you'll, you'll have areas that are explained in detail in the adventure and then the vast majority will be just undetailed but you'll have the map and so you can just fill in the rooms and locations with what you want surly tim if you were a coffee drinker you could kick this out a lot faster that's probably true it's probably true if i was taking taking drugs i could probably do that as well but i don't take drugs so it's not going to happen um coffee's obviously a lot lot less dangerous Wouldn't make sense considering my view on on, uh, on enhancements anyway. It's taken me a long time to... Um, it took me ages to, to get rid of the desire to have anything that had caffeine in it. 
coffee, coffee, caffeine. Although, to be fair, I, I have I have managed to eat dark chocolate. Apparently, I can eat some dark chocolate. I pay for it, like, big time, but I can do it uh, in small amounts. Hello, Lego. Lugo, Lego Lake is back again. All right, so right now, people are watching me paint on the grey plates, which is going to be just so time consuming. I know if my brother was doing this, it would be so much better. I don't think he has an awful lot of time to do that sort of thing now. Where am I from, Lego Lake? I am from New Zealand. I was born in New Zealand. I live in New Zealand. That is on the um, the underneath of the world, it's very close to where Australia is, but we are not part of Australia. Um, we've we've decided the Australians can, you know, they can have their own continents, and we'll have our little island. Well, it's two lot two islands, should I say? Very very small place. Not much to it really. And here we go. I am definitely going to wash this part as well. It's going to get washed. Oh, that, the paint is getting grey. The grey paint is getting very, very thick. So I'm going to have to water it down. And now the brush is loaded with wet paint. And I feel like it's just going to go everywhere. So um, let's just see if I can stroke out a few of these. Oh, man, my hand is moving all over the place. And now I'm down to using both hands to control the brush. I've been painting too long. That's what it is, painting too long. How long have we been at this? 72 minutes? Seriously? Uh. And feed the brush, feed the brush along. But um, bum 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 bum. It's not too bad. It's not complete, but hey, let's do it again. Let's see if we can. Oh, man, I'm shaking now. I'm shaking. Is it my nerves? Oh, it's just. Give me a second, guys. I got the the shakes right now. I can't get my keep my hands still. I just need to just, maybe just shake it out, shake it out, shake it out, oh, okay, let's, let's have another shot at that, oh, yeah. my hand is all over the place, it's just awful, okay, coolos, that's that bit done there, mostly, Maybe not, maybe. Let's try again. Paint across there, down, across, and yeah, that's the paint's getting too thick. It's drying on my brush. Hello, James. How's it going? Try holding your paint wrist with a, your free hand to steady the shaking fret. I actually have been doing that. You can't tell, but I have been doing it. But um, yeah, I think it's a good suggestion, by the way. All right, so that didn't do too badly. It's it's on. I've still got plenty of grey paint, so we're going to keep going until I run out of grey paint. I feel like that's a necessity at this present time. Okay, so I'm going to change the angle of my worm. Uh, how do I do it in such a way that you can see it and I can get at it? Alright, so now I've got to hold the worm. No, I want to just rest it on, so I can use my other hand. As James has pointed out, I'll need both hands to steady things. There we go. Let's have a go at this. Okay. 
this this is probably not the the uh, the, the calming and restful part of the painting. be fair though I think I've made it worse by trying to live stream at the same time it has got to be easier to paint this sort of thing without having an audience <laughs> right there we go oh okay all right, so wash off the brush, give it another shot. Boy, man. I need to have a hat rack in my um, office for all my hats to hang up on. I mean, I've got too many hats as it is, but I need somewhere for them to be. A hat rack. It's a good idea, actually. Bum! Bumzos, again! Alright. What's that, James? First stream I imagine to watch live, by the way. Oh, it's the first time you've joined us. Hey, welcome, man. Welcome. It's it's not exactly the most um, stunning live stream. You know, watching me paint grey plates on a uh, purple worm. I'm sure there are better things to do with your time. My hand is in the way guys it's because I just need the angle don't know if it's necessarily worked I feel like it might have okay all right so yeah hey welcome man if it's the first time always happy to have new people come and chat with me I do this for a reason you know, there's a reason why I go live is because I know that it's the way of the future and I know it means that people get to know me rather than it just being some guy who does videos uh, and occasionally chats with you or comments on the occasional video and then does little heart things. Nothing wrong with doing a little heart thing on the comments section but it ain't very hard to do right? Silly Tim, I don't know that I can live stream my language can be a little bad. Well I struggle with the English language and it's the only language I know. There's nothing, nothing simple and easy about English, if you ask me. I always felt like it was confusing, it doesn't follow the same rules, there's so many exceptions. <sighs> yeah, okay, hang on. Grey paint is getting uh, a little bit on the thick side, I'm just going to paint that out. And I need to have a better attack angle because I can't get at nothing now. Um, so what do we do? We turn it, we turn it and we rest it there. Maybe that'll work. I don't know if I can get, get at very much. Cursing. Yeah, well, yes. Well, you know why I've been cursing through this. I'm trying not to, I really are. It's just, uh, it's the big words you're going to worry about, right? Because that, that'll cause issues. I always recommend going with fudge. Maybe you could just curse in vegetables and fruit. I knew somebody who used to do that. Um, I know that you guys can't actually see how the paint's going on on these plates, but for some reason, just given this position, it's actually a lot easier to get at. <laughs> I'm, I'm attacking those first. Sorry. Um, okay, so now that. It is so hard to access things. I'm doing a wonderful job, Sir Tim. Thank you, man. I think that my hand is just about ready to fall asleep. Ah, okay, and last, right, two fingers, two hands, control the brush. Ah, 
I know you can't see what I'm doing here, but I'll turn it around so you can see now. Okay, so that's that's what I did. I got in there and I tried to sort of attack the, the diamond shaped um, plate section. So that's what I've been at at this present time. Okay, so um, it comes down to angle and position now. I can't do it from there. That's not going to work. I might be able to get some of those from that angle. I don't know how much you guys can see if I do it that way, but we'll, we'll give it a go. All right, yay. Yes, ha ha. I think that's partial success on my part. Oh, I can get it that bit a lot more now. That's easier. I can come back through here. Amazing, I can actually see what I'm doing. That's worked out quite nicely as it happens. Very good. Not finished, but progressing. Okay, so can I get that last little plate that's so hard to access? James, what's this? Hey man, I watch most of your videos. Okay, New Zealand D&D is like non-existent after all. <laughs> I, I figure since you're painting a worm, mind hearing about uh, rot grubs while you're at it regarding the Cabal Tinkerer's ability? I... <laughs> Well, um, I don't really know an awful lot about it. Um, and you know, the, the simple fact is that Dungeons & Dragons isn't actually non-existent in New Zealand because I built a Facebook group. Um, I don't know if you're on it. And it helps link people up. Um, it's very active. There's about 2,000 people. Um, I don't mind talking about rock grubs, but uh, I like the idea of the rock grub. I've just never used them. But you're welcome to talk about them if you like. If you want me to talk about them, I'm probably not going to be able to make it. I'm going to, I'm going to try to finish off my last little bit here. A couple more plates, and then I'm going to rest up my hand. Because I feel like I'm uh, pushing my luck now. And I might wind up just making a mess. And it hasn't worked out too badly so far. So yes, if you're in New Zealand and you think you... Um, that D&D is non-existent it isn't actually non-existent it just depends on what part of the country you are in it's just more active in some parts than others there's there's actually um, I'm not the only YouTube channel that does D&D stuff too there's AJ Pickett he's from New Zealand and um, I've got a friend who also does his smaller, much smaller channel though. So there are people who are doing it. It's just maybe not as many as you might expect. Um, James, that's good to hear. In Christchurch, we don't get much going on. Trying to get um, a time slot at the local game store, but not uh, enough interest. Yeah, no, I, I understand. Yeah, Christchurch, when I was the Adventurers League um, coordinator, was very hard. You've got um, Andre, who's dealing with Christchurch, and um, a lot of their games that Andre sets up and organises are very limited in size. So that's probably why you're struggling finding access to, to games in Christchurch, okay? Not to mention the fact that there isn't that many people in Christchurch as it is. Not like, it's not like you're dealing with Auckland. Um, and although I don't live in Auckland, I live close enough to Auckland that I can benefit from that sort of thing. I had to travel for about an hour to get to a game. In, in fact, it is an hour. That's how long it takes me to get, get to a game. I live a long way off. Okay. All right. Um, look, I'm going to stop there because my brush and my, my gray is done. It's getting, my hand is moving all over the place. I will turn it around so you can sort of have a decent look. 
at what I've done so far today. And I mean, I will eventually be back. We will continue with the Purple Worm. I'm not, it's not like I'm saying, ah, no, that's all I've done. I can't be bothered doing any more. Um, I feel like the flesh in there has really made a huge difference. Um, the plates are starting to come together, but there's a lot of work uh, to do yet. And I feel like the mouth will work out. Um, I just need to keep layering in the paint till I finally get the fleshy bits going. So yeah, I think that'll all work out in the end. I certainly hope so. Okay, so I'm going to just leave... Am I going to leave Mr. Worm like that? I'm going to leave Mr. Worm like this. I'm going to leave Mr. Worm like this for now. Something like that. Something like that. That'll do. Okay. So let's do my sign out because I'm ready to take a break and go and have some food. So, um, yeah. Hey, thank you for joining me uh, in the live, um, live stream. For those of you who are still here after an hour and a bit, well done. Um, <laughs> you did a magnificent job. Thank you for watching the, uh, the video. Uh, if, please share and like the video so other people think it was worth watching, if, if at all. But yeah, share and like the video if you think there's somebody else who might find it useful or you enjoyed this. Um, subscribe to my channel if you don't mind waiting another week before I live stream my painting. Otherwise, I do a lot of other videos. So yeah, consider subscribing and uh, hitting the bell button to be notified when I go live and when I publish new videos. And I do one pretty much every day, just about. Um, also too, you supported my channel by watching this video. I do appreciate it. Thank you very much. Um, watching more of my videos will continue to support me. I don't do Patreon, uh, but I do have affiliate links down in the description. Uh, the link to this worm, uh, the purple worm that you can pop buy from uh, Gale Force 9 is also down in the description. I, it's not an affiliate link. You just have to order it through them. It's a special order. Um, but I do have Amazon and Book Depository affiliate links that you can go and buy stuff online if you want. Uh, you don't have to pay anything more, you pay the standard price, I get a small commission. You just go through the link, you don't have to buy the thing I have linked to. Uh, and then that's it, it's really, it's pretty simple. Now, when it comes to questions, look, uh, your opportunity to give feedback in the live chat, we're just about to wrap up, so type in quickly before I leave. Otherwise, down in the comments, you can put your feedback down in the comments about this video and the painting of the miniature and so forth, or any thoughts you have, or if you just want to say hi, that's all good too. Okay. So, uh, just the last thing here, what's this, James? Hey, yeah, enough. Uh, yeah, yeah, true enough. Currently, I have permanent location in Wollstown. We run two games a week for about 10 players. Hopefully, I could connect with those folks you mentioned to uh, to expand. Yeah, jump on Face Group and check them out, okay? It's probably the easy, that, that'll be the easiest way to deal with that. Certainly, Tim, mate, thank you for um, chatting with me. It's been really good. Um, looks really good. Thanks for the live stream. Hey, man, you're welcome. I'll see you later, everybody. See you, James. Oh, almost forgot. Until next time, keep rolling those 20s.